Hi guys, NeuroGal MD here. I'm a double board certified neurologist and epileptologist. I've gotten several requests to talk about what might be going on with Senator Mitch McConnell over the past several months. He had two freezing episodes while speaking in public. The first time was several months ago while speaking at a press conference. And then several days ago uh, while speaking at an event in Kentucky. So let me show you a clip here. Good. Senator, you're up for election in three short years. What are your thoughts on that? I'm sorry, I had a hard time hearing you. That's okay. What are your thoughts on running for re-election in 2026? What are my thoughts about what? Running for re-election in 2026. Oh, that's good. So he freezes, behavioral arrest, <clears throat> speech arrest. Did you hear the question, Senator? Running for re-election in 2026? His eyes are wandering off to the right, fixated to the right. We call this deviation. Right, I'm sorry, you all, we're going to need a minute. In, in medical terminology. Kind of looks like he may be doing something with his mouth, but it's hard to see. Okay. Somebody else have a question? Please speak up. Um, what efforts is Daniel Cameron going to have to make on the campaign trail to make campaigns over in November? Senator Daniel Cameron, do uh, you have a comment on Daniel Cameron? Well, I think the government race is going to be very close. Um, far and away, the best candidate we could have nominated. And, uh, the state has become increasingly Republican, in fact, the government has become the Democrat left, honestly. So I'm optimistic that Daniel will be a next governor. The, the event a couple of months ago at the press conference. After finishing the NDA uh, this week, it's been good bipartisan cooperation and a string of... Uh, uh... All right, so he's having behavioral and speech arrest again. Looks like he's staring off. He seems confused. So this is the, uh, we're coming up on the one year like anniversary might be of the licking IRA. His lips. And, That's um, a common sign of, of course, seizures. Uh, you can see that in seizures. Okay, so it seems like these two episodes were fairly similar in how they looked clinically. Um, there are several things that could be going on. Uh, and of course, I'm not his physician and I don't know the whole story, so I can't make a diagnosis. Uh, I can only talk about my thoughts based on what I see and what I've read. But I have read that these events occurred in the setting of several falls that happened several months ago. And from what I read, the falls happened before these events started. He, when he fell down, he, he had some head injury. I don't know the extent of the head injury, but brain injury can put you at risk for several neurological conditions, specifically seizures. The fact that these two events were pretty stereotyped in the setting of recent head injury makes me think that they are likely seizures. Seizures are abnormal electrical activity in the brain. So if they are, seizures are probably coming from one particular area of the brain, probably a region that may have been injured from his fall. Another possibility is that these are TIAs or transient ischemic attacks. Uh, these are caused by a temporary blockage of blood vessels in the brain, either from a blood clot or something called atherosclerosis, which is like 
hardening and build up a plaque in the blood vessels. Sometimes the blood vessel com gets completely blocked and it causes lack of blood flow to a certain region of the brain, which can cause various symptoms, including speech arrest. By the way, a TIA is sometimes called a mini stroke because uh, a permanent stroke ca is caused by permanent blockage of a blood vessel to the brain, which causes permanent damage. A TIA only causes symptoms transiently, transiently because the blockage is only temporary and the blood clot disintegrates, resolves, and blood flow is restored to the brain, usually without any permanent injury to the brain. These are my top two diagnoses on the differential diagnosis list. Hopefully uh, his physicians are working to figure this out. In general, people with these symptoms will get a series of tests. Uh, they will get imaging of their brain. Typically, we order an MRI of the brain to evaluate for any evidence of stroke or any scar tissue, perhaps from the brain injury that could be causing seizures. Also, imaging of the vessels of the head and the neck could look for any blockages or narrowing of blood vessels that could predispose someone to stroke or TIAs. Another test that might be helpful would be an electroencephalogram or an EEG. This is a test in which electrodes are placed on the scalp to monitor the electrical activity in the brain to look for any evidence of seizure activity. These are obviously something that needs to be addressed. It's not just a sign of aging. These are stereotyped episodic events. So this is not just a lapse in memory. This is not just oh, I'm aging, this is, this is a concerning sign for an actual neurological disorder. My thoughts are that these are probably focal seizures that have been caused by, uh, by brain injury from his falls. Again, I am not his physician, I don't know the full story, but just to answer your questions about this topic, my sympathy goes out to him. I hope that he and his doctors are able to figure out and treat what is going on. If they do indeed happen to be seizures, seizures are treated. Most people with seizures respond to anti-seizure medications that will stop the abnormal electrical activity in the brain and will allow a person to continue to live their lives normally. So the fact that he's had these episodic lapse, uh, these episodic freezing moments does not mean that he necessarily has to step down from office or has to stop working uh, if these if these indeed are seizures. Uh, again, I am not his physician. I, my heart and sympathies go out to him, and I sincerely hope that his doctors can help get to the bottom of this and help him.